Laura Schreiber here. As a mom of twins and a super cute dog, sometimes it's hard to know which end is up. Between my work as a full-time voiceover actress and being a mom and a wife, it never feels like there's enough time in the day. Anyone else feel like that? Lucky for me, I'm not in it alone. I have lots of amazing friends who have figured a few things out. So we've got your back, and together, working moms can support each other. Hi, Michelle. Welcome. I'm so happy to have you today. Hi, Laura. Thanks for having me. I'm here with Michelle Blanker from California, Mission Viejo, right? Yeah, Mission Viejo. I'm so glad I could say that right. And she's a mom of four. Four. And a full-time voiceover actress. Amazing. Thank you. It's exciting. (laughs) So how's the weather there today? Is it nice? It is nice. You know, it's a, uh, it's cool, which I'm so grateful for. Like actually having on a longer sleeve shirt feels so good. I'm so sick of being sweaty Betty all day. So it's kind of nice. I, uh, I hear that we're getting Santa Ana weather um, shortly, like two days from now. So it's going to be back to hot, mm. hot, hot. Well, uh, our weather's flip-flopping back and forth here too, so, but it's beautiful it? out back east. It's really nice. Oh, I saw some colors uh, some friends of mine were posting. I'm like, oh, I do miss the fall back east. It is. It's really beautiful out. So I'm hoping that you can tell us about how your responsibilities have changed over the years with your family. Yeah, you know, um, you know when I started doing voiceover, <clears throat> my kids were real itty-bitty, and when they're that little you know, they're just all encompassing. You're, you spend every minute, you know, focused on their every need and they, they require so much care and attention. And, um, and, and kind of my voiceover career grew out of that too. When it first started, it was in its infancy and I didn't expect that much of myself. I knew I couldn't, I knew that it would just be this really slow journey of, you know, taking baby steps and putting one foot in front of the other every day. And as I've, as they've grown, that has given me more time during my day to be in front of the, in front of the microphone and, you know, reaching out to more people and, you know, getting more clients. So it's, it's a process, you know, Um, it's a, it's a cool process because I never wanted to, um, you know, I didn't want to go back to a full-time job. I had one of those for many, many years. So I didn't want to go back to that. And so this has allowed me the ability to be at home. And if, you know, and their needs are requiring me, I can just be there. So it's awesome. And each little thing that they begin to take on allows you a little more time, you know, to kind of go in another direction, do your own thing. So. So how has your work family balance changed? Well, when I started pursuing anything to do with voiceover, which was 10 years ago now, they were pretty young. You know, the yeah. baby was, what, f- mm, third, or, third or fourth grade, I think. And then, so I had four kids in seven years. Wow. They were all back to back. I mean, I think I spent 17 years at the elementary school next which is across the street from my house That's and the teachers would joke with me because they'd be like do you have a tent out back but I didn't I just lived across the street <laughs> <laughs> and it was a crack up because they would call me the ones that knew me well you know um do you have a mixer we could borrow um can you maybe come up with a couple of cups of sugar, you know, for an experiment or somebody was making pancakes or That is so funny. It was. It was hysterical. I mean, I And think I'm, about all the extra time you had with your kids because you were across the street. Oh, I know. I mean, I lived up there. I absolutely lived at that school. And I'm so grateful I had the opportunity to do that. You and know? imagine if if you hadn't been in voiceover and you had worked anywhere besides from your home, you would have missed all of that. For sure. For sure. And as I say, when that all started, I had no concept of voiceover. I had, you know, I have a degree in performance. I was a vocal performance, classically trained uh, singer. And when I came to California, I got a job in sales and I worked in sales for a bunch of years. And 
it was great because I used my performance skills in getting up in front of these enormous crowds of people and selling them on this insurance product. And that grew. I worked for that company for nine years wow. till I was pulled over pregnant on the side of the freeway with two kids in car seats, scooping the <laughs> heave out of the back, out of the back seat. <laughs> okay, I said, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> right. Something different. <laughs> Something's got to change. So anyway, as I was, you know, at home, it was just the oddest sensation, right? When I first was at home with these kids, like, what the hell do I do now? You yeah. Know? What do I do all day? I can't, there's no coffee break on this job. Yeah. <laughs> you can't go take a break. So I started, um, it was the oddest thing. I read an article in the newspaper and someone had had a class at the local junior college about voiceover. And I read this article and was like, wow, that is really cool. Like yeah. that's so up my alley, you know, using my voice, being in front of people. Sorry, my phone keeps bleeping. Even though I've put it on privacy, it doesn't want to listen. That's to okay. So, so anyway, I was like, wow, check that out. And I literally put the paper down. That's when we read the paper, right? So that's yeah. how long ago it was. And I went to the computer and I Googled voiceover. And that's how it began. I found a school that was near me. I started taking classes. Um, you know, I went through a course of a series of courses there. And then I started reaching out to LA and started meeting people up in LA and uh, built it all, you know, one little brick at a time. And only, you know, my third child graduated high school last year. I still mm -hmm. have one in high school. She's a highly intense kid uh, because she's a competitive softball player and she's got um, a learning disability. So it's kind of a challenge in keeping her all going in the right direction. But the responsibilities as mom have started to wane, you know, in some ways. They get bigger. They change. They don't right. go away. They shift to mom, you know, like I say about the FAFSA. Have you done the FAFSA? Mom, <laughs> this is happening, you know, with school. Uh, mom, can you order me this book on, on crime? I need this, my son, this morning for, mm -hmm. for a course he's taking. Sure, you know, and but as I say... All of that still allows me more and more and more time to be in the booth, to be here, to be accessible to producers, whomever wants to hire me. And I can, you know, I can navigate that. I can, you know, I used to tell my husband, I do more work in one day than most women do in a month. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing how much you figure out how to get done with four kids at home. So what are some of the tips or tricks that you have for the rest of us that you've come up with over the years? Well, I'd say when I was younger and the kids were, you know, as a, in that really intense stage, my kids were always extraordinarily active. We were in Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. They all played sports. Um, at one time we had the four kids were playing on seven different sports teams. And I... That's amazing. Seven. That's incredible. I can only imagine. It was a mind blower. And even friends around me were like, you could give lessons. Like it was it, like, I, I would just blow their minds because I always seem to have it together, at least in their eyes, you know, Yeah. the way that I did that. And it was a learned skill because, you know, I, I was an organizer. I was, you know, I was into sales. I was into organization and getting things done. So as my, my methodology became this wild big calendar of color coding each kid each team, each whatever, and a lot of pre-planning. You know, if yeah. you've got a family and your kids are busy, you've got to get that stuff done and pre-planned. So, for instance, I, I always remember the most, the busiest weekend my husband ever and I ever had. We had 23 games in one weekend to get these kids to. That's was like insanity. That insanity. would be insane for a month. I can't even imagine. Right. And I was like, somebody's got to quit. <laughs> <laughs> right. But they were really, you know, and we would say to them, do you want to quit? You know, do you want to keep doing this? Because I don't have to if you don't want to. <laughs> right. But they did. But they did. And they loved it. And they were really great at it, you know. So yeah. it wasn't, as a matter of fact, we all appeared on a, on a um, talk show. Um, 
at one time. It was a, it was like a promo show where they were trying to work out if they were really going to have the show. And it was with, um, oh gosh, the guy's name's going to escape me. Who's the guy that does Survivor? Oh, gosh darn it. Anyway, he was the host of the show and they brought my big family on and they had this other little family with one poor little boy. <laughs> and they had a psychologist on stage with us talking about kids and sports, you know, and it was just a cool experience, you know, because they were like, well, you know, trying to get at this family was of the mindset. Every kid that was out there deserved to have a medal. And oh. we were sort of like, nah, you know, that's not why we're doing it, you know? Right. And, and it was kind of cool because my oldest got an opportunity to speak about, you know, you know, her, her thoughts on that. And she was very eloquent at that time. But um, anyway, parenting's a, a really, you know, it's a fascinating job, as you know. I know. And it's amazing that you did all of this while getting your business off the ground and, and making contacts and managing all of your clients and your relationships. So do you have any, um, any advice of something that you know now that you wish you knew 10 years ago? I wished, you know, I had, uh, you know, I just was the single person going out as a mom. I had all these kids. I wished I had found a coach Mm. early on to, to go with and stick with. And, you know, I've been to a number of coaches now, yeah. you know, but in those early days when I was taking these classes, I think right. it's been a really good enhancement to have a coach. a coach at the same time and, um, used a coach to help maybe get me somewhere faster, you know, um, because they hear things that you don't necessarily hear, you know, and they oftentimes are more up on what the market will bear, you know, right. what the market's doing. You know, I had studied with um, David Lyerly before he went off and did other things. And what a fascinating man, you know, um, in the way he approaches copy and in the way he approaches life. And um, for me, I mean, we couldn't have been on more opposite ends of the planet, you know, in terms of where we are in our lives. But I took so much from him and was able to apply it, you know, and bring it in the booth and feel a, a level of confidence that I hadn't felt, you know. So, and that was only in the recent past, you know what I mean? That's so, so interesting. Like, oh, why wouldn't I, why didn't I do something like that earlier, you know? Right. Um, so, um, you know, and, and maybe why didn't I maybe not take so many classes here and have put more funding into some other, into some other aspects of, you know, cause I, I still haven't even, I'm still on the precipice of doing a video game demo, doing an animation game demo, even though, you know, I think it's been almost three or four years now that I took Bob Bergen's class that I've studied wow. you know, with this one and that one. And you some know, of the real greats. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the top, top guys, yeah. but you know, I, it's not on my time is how I just have to give it away and hope that it'll all happen when it's supposed to happen. Right. Yeah. That all the pieces will settle in yeah. place. So your number one takeaway for working moms, whether they're in voiceover or a number field or another field, number one thing that, that, um, that you'd like people to take away from this best piece of advice you have. I think for, for you to, you know, and I always just continued to not beat myself up about getting work or getting better because so many times you can't see that you're getting better. You can't sense that you're getting better, but you are. You're few, even, even the tiniest little thing, if you can do one tiny little thing every day, then do that and be happy that you did that. Because as a mom, those little humans need you more than anything. And you'll never get that time back. Never. I mean, I look at my children and I think, wow. I mean, my mother always told me, be the, 20, the fastest 20 years of your life. And boy, has it, you know, I just, they're, you know, they're, people ask, what do you do? I say, I raise humans. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so proud. And I think that had I not been here in the capacity I was to be able to say, and boy, was I frustrated. Give yourself that. Yeah. There were days where I was like, 
would everybody just leave me alone? I'm <laughs> this one, you know, the, whatever. I, you know, you start the day off with such great ideas and prospects of how many things you can get and get to done, to done that day. And if you'd be darn lucky to get, you know, one or two done, then that's, then just be pleased. Be pleased. You did something. You took a step. And it takes baby steps, but we'll all, we can all share in the pie and we all will by taking little baby steps. So that's wonderful. I'll tell you, mine are 14 and I know it's gone in the blink of an eye to have the twins be this big already. It kind of blows my mind. And I see behind you, you're something wonderful is about to happen to have this positive (laughs) outlook. I have something real cheerful above my desk. I just have boringness in my studio, but above my desk, I have all these cheerful sayings and it makes all the difference to have a bright outlook, I think. It does. And, you know, I'm, I'm such a goofball. I, you know, my kids, they, uh, they just know I'm such a nut, you know, how I communicate, how I am with the world, how I, you know, there's, I've never met a stranger and they'll see me winding up. I mean, I'll go up to a complete stranger who's texting on the street and and tap on the shoulder and say, excuse me, this is a no texting zone. I'm sorry. You're going to have to move across the street. (laughs) <laughs> just start a conversation and make, and make somebody smile yeah and I take such joy in doing that and my kids have always and they're turning out when you start to see your children's humor yeah how funny they can be and you know it's just the it's joy beyond for me because I've always said they'll they'll say to me no mom no no don't do it because they'll see me winding up like watch this <laughs> Well, and the fact that you've raised four of them, you have so much to be proud of. That's truly amazing. And the business that you've built. So if somebody wants to find you, whether it's for a voiceover project or for production help, where can they find you? Sure. I'm at um, michelleblanker.com. Okay. And my email is michelleblanker at gmail.com. And of course, blanker is always a tough one, but it's B-L-E-N-K-E-R. People think it's blinker, (laughs) (laughs) but it's blinker. Well, Yeah. That's great. Any exciting projects you want to plug? Uh, What am I working on? What am I working? I have something kind of very cool I'm working on, but I can't talk about it yet. Oh, okay. So that well, comes to fruition, I can let you know. Well, but, we'll look um, out for it. I can't thank you enough for taking the time. I have a, um, a really fun little t-shirt. In, uh, I don't know if you can see it. I'm holding it up. It says, don't let anyone ever dull your sparkle. And then on the back, it's hashtag got your back. Oh, my hashtag for these. So it's going to be in the mail to you to California. And I hope you love it. It's actually super soft. So I'm excited about it. I love it. I so love it. Thank you. I had them made just for the women who participate in this YouTube project. So I'm so excited. You know what? Hey, I I would like to just say to any woman out there, if you're having a tough time and you want to just talk to me, please call me. I am. My door is always open. I'm always, always willing and able to talk to anybody about voiceover or parenting or how I get it done. I'm, I please, I, I would love to be a resource to anyone. Well, that is like the biggest gift you can give someone. I just feel like the support that we give each other as women and as moms and as friends is the most amazing thing. So I can't thank you enough. This has been so special. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, I miss you and I hope that I see you soon. I know. I hope I get to see you soon too. I'll be going to St. Louis soon but anyway well we may be in california in february so i'll keep you posted yay yay well let's do that then yeah (laughs) well i'll talk to you soon michelle take care bye bye everyone take care Bye. bye remember our dreams are all possible don't ever let anyone dull your sparkle together our sparkle is brighter copyrights and production rights by laura schreiber voice llc